What up, nerds? My name is Leslie Smith, and welcome to The Nerdy Narrative. On today's episode of Bookish Fun, I'm going to show you all of the books that I have hauled during the month of April. And I have more than I thought that I did, but some I actually had ordered and pre-ordered and they just showed up this month. So it looks like I bought a bunch, but I actually bought them previously and they just showed up. So the very first one I'm gonna show you is a set that is gonna look really familiar to you. And you're right, it's The Faithful and the Fallen. And you're thinking, Leslie, you already have The Faithful and the Fallen. Why would you have another set? Well, the Faithful and the Fallen series that I read last year, I actually bought used. Whenever I discover a new author, I usually will pick up their book secondhand from the library. I don't want to invest a ton of money into something without knowing how I'm going to like it. Obviously, you guys know I absolutely love John Gwynn. So I did pick this set up. It is from the UK, so there's a little bit shorter ones, which I absolutely do not mind at all. And I'm going to give my other set to another friend of mine when I go home next month. But I did pick these up from The Broken Binding, which is a UK store. I don't think they're currently shipping to the US right now. They're new and they gotta get all that stuff straightened out. I had already completed my purchase and they had already started the shipping process to me when they found out they needed to do some other stuff before they could ship to the US. At any rate, as soon as they put the link on Twitter and I saw it, I bought them because it said, signed by the author. And you see the big sticker here, which I, I haven't got to take those off. Like don't put stickers on books. They're beautiful though. They're much beautiful than the set that I purchased. The set that I purchased, see the backgrounds here? That is so light on the set that I purchased that you can barely see it. So I love that they're new, but I really love that they were signed by the author. Now I did not look at the small print and that is totally 100% on me. They put the link out that said signed by the author. What they actually meant was they put a signed book plate in the book. If I had realized it was just a signed book plate, I definitely wouldn't have repurchased the books. But that's on me because I did go back and look at the website and where you actually click to purchase the book. If you scroll all the way down, it does say that it is a book plate, not an actual signed book. So shame on me, but I won't do that again. Book plates are cool and all, but if I'm going to buy a book I would rather it be actually signed by an author. Now, if an author says, oh, you bought my books and you love them so much, I'm going to send you signed book plates. That's one thing. But I mean, I already had these. There was no point. While I was at it, I went ahead and got the Of Blood and Bone trilogy from Broken Binding as well, which has the signed book plates. Uh, but I'm really excited about having this trilogy because I only had the first book. I only had A Time of Dread. So I did get the two books that I didn't already have. Now I can finish this trilogy. I am super excited. But I'm, I'm actually digging the, the little bit shorter UK version of these paperbacks. For some reason, they just, they just fit good in my hand. And then the next two books I actually purchased last year and totally forgot about them because COVID held everything up. But I actually kicked in on the Way of Kings Leatherbound Kickstarter by Brandon Sanderson. And the tier that I got I got the hardback version of Dawn Shard with that. And then apparently a cloth bound Way of Kings Prime, which I did not remember at all. I really honestly didn't remember that this was part of it, or I probably didn't notice, or actually I didn't even know what the Way of Kings Prime was until it showed up. And it is how the Way of Kings originally was before it became what it is now. Some of the characters had completely different names. It's so cool. Or they were spelled differently. But the quality of this book is amazing. I love the feel of the pages in it. They just feel so smooth. Just phenomenal. And they have a really unique smell to them. So it must be a different type of paper that they used. I don't know. But it just smells different. 
kind of like fish. Maybe I shouldn't smell that. But it is the 2002 alternate edition of The Way of Kings. I haven't decided if I want to read it because I don't know how that will make me feel. It might confuse me about The Way of Kings. So I might would possibly consider reading it when I do a reread of The Stormlight. Read it first and then read the version that we now have that is The Stormlight Archives Book 1 and see what I think because there's a lot of changes from what I understand. So, but it's very beautiful. I love it. It's gorgeous. And then finally, Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb finally showed up. Uh, last month, you remember, I hauled the Farseer Trilogy and the Live Ship Trader series. And this was the only one that was still floating out and about in the world somewhere. It finally showed up. Thank goodness. Uh, I just... I just absolutely love these covers. Absolutely love these covers. And then one of my pre-orders showed up. It is The Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo. This book is absolutely gorgeous. This is one of the most gorgeous books. The dust jacket is gorgeous, but look at the cover. I am just in awe of how beautiful that is. I'm just at war with myself because I don't want to put the dust jacket back on, but then I do because the dust jacket is pretty too. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I am extremely excited to continue reading through the Grishaverse. Oh man. Yeah, you smell good. That's a good kind of paper right there. I still have only read Shadow and Bone and Siege and Storm. I have got to get Ruin and Rising under my belt. And then I need to read the Six of Crows duology and then King of Scars so that I can get to this beautiful book. So I also picked up Wise Blood by Flannery O'Connor. I've never read anything by her. I was kind of looking for a place to start. I asked the Codex Cantina what their next piece was that they were going to cover by her. And Una said this one was on the docket. So I picked it up because I was going to get it from my library. Because if you'll remember, I said new authors I wanted to read for free or for cheap. But my library has an eight week wait on this book. I couldn't believe it. This book was published in 1949 and there is still today in 2021 an eight week wait. So I thought to myself, it must be really good. It must be one I need to have on my shelf. So I picked it up. Another pre-order that came in this month is A Longer Fall by Charlene Harris. This is book two in the Gunny Rose series that Charlene Harris wrote. And if you think back with me here, I did a fun project with Julie from The Hungry Bookworm last year where she chose my TBR for me. She chose three books for me to read. And An Easy Death, which is book one in the series, was, the book, was one of the books that she chose and I absolutely loved it. It was a really fun urban fantasy of a female gunslinger, if you will. I loved that book so much. So I pre-ordered the second book. So that came in. I'm going to have to find room to sneak this one in. I can't wait to see what happens next. You might remember last month, Una from the Codex Cantina and I buddy read the comic book series Chief by John Lehman and Rob Guillory. That series was so much fun. We had the best time reading it together. And Una actually found that there is a second series that John Lehman started. And that is Chew. Uh, spelled a little bit different. I'm sad to say that the artist is Dan Boltwood for this one. I don't know why Rob Guillory didn't come back. I'm a little sad about that, but this series is focused on Tony Chu from the first one and his criminal sister, Saffron. So I'm really excited to read this one. It's not all the way out yet. There's only one issue so far. I'm going to be keeping my eyes peeled for the follow-up issues. I will be collecting the series and I can't decide if I want to read them as I get them or wait until the series is completed. It's going to be a very difficult decision to make. The next book I picked up is Nosferatu by Joe Hill. I've wanted to read this book for forever. I've heard so many good things about it. I saw that my friend Steve from Steve Talks About Books and Stuff, this is going to be a read-along that he is doing. 
So I've picked the book up in hopes of getting to join in on that read along for the month of May. I'm going to link Steve's channel and his forums below if you're interested. If you haven't read it and you want to read it or you read it and you want to see what some newbies think about it, you'll be able to join in all the fun there. Uh, but this one is one I've just wanted to read for the longest time. I have read the first volume in Joe Hill's Lock and Key comic series and I really like that so I bet I'm going to love this too. All it smells, I'm going to love to smell it as I read it. <sighs> so good. The next book that I picked up is Betty by Tiffany McDaniel. This book has been making the rounds in the horror community on booktube. Everybody is talking about this book. There have been so many people that said it is the most impactful book they've ever read. I have to know guys. I have to know what this book is about for myself. Kelly from Kelly Hooked on Books and Brad Proctor are co-hosting a buddy read for this in May. I'm going to link both of their channels down below in the description. I will link Brad Proctor's Discord because that's where the discussion will be for this one. I can't wait to find out about this book. I really love, look at the deckled edges. They're a little bit different than I've seen before. I love it. They're all just so different with their size and the way they're cut. It is so cool, but I am very, very excited to get into this one. The next book I have not read. I have not read anything by this author. Nikki from Dark Between Pages made me do it. She reviewed this book on her channel and she linked to me the publishers for the UK and the US that were doing this special edition of this book. And I had to have it. And that is Westlake Soul by Rio Ewers. I'm probably saying his name wrong, but this book is absolutely gorgeous. It is a collector's edition. Not only does it have this gorgeous dust jacket that wraps around front to back, the book itself is amazing. It's cloth bound with the gold foil, but What's really cool is there are only 400 of these that were made. I have number 158 and it is actually signed by Rio Yours and Owen King. And the inside of it is absolutely gorgeous. Like it's in color. So we've got like the introduction here is by Owen King. We've got black and red in there. There are so much gorgeous artwork in this book. I just, I don't know if any of these are still available for purchase. I will try to find those links and drop them in the description box down below if you would like to see if you can pick up a copy. Uh, I don't know if I'll actually bring myself to read this copy or I may just have to try and wait and get my hands on a paperback copy or from the library so that I can keep this one immaculate because this one is gorgeous. So. So there's a secret. Whenever I order from my indie bookstore and I get multiple books and they all come in the same box, it's like they just bake in each other's scent and they just smell even better. But this one is A Brightness Long Ago by Guy Gavril K. How did I end up with this book? Well, that's a funny story. A Brightness Long Ago, being in my hands and ending up on my TBR, is the result of an elaborate April Fool's prank a subscriber named Steve pulled on me. Yep, you heard me. A prank. That's how I ended up with this book. Here's how that happened. Steve and I email each other frequently. We have become pals over the course of this channel and he himself is a fantastic writer. He writes me the best fan fiction about different things that we read. So I didn't notice anything was amiss when he decided to start telling me this story a few days prior to April 1st. It was so interesting. He would just give me a few paragraphs or a page a day. It was so full of intrigue and mystery and murder. And I was just like, I need to know what happens next. What happens next? Does this happen? Does this happen? Does this person get away? Like. What happens next? Well, it almost didn't work out 
quite according to his plan because over the weekend I'm kind of hit or miss with checking up with my socials and emails and things because I try to hang out with Chris as much as possible and that particular weekend we were really really busy but he needed me to ask to get to a certain point and luckily I came in clutch like at the last possible minute I was like but what happens next so on April 1st he replies and he says well as for what happens next you can go and get A Brightness Long Ago by Guy Gravel K at any local bookseller and you can find out what happens next. I was like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> he said, I have shamelessly plagiarized this book because I want you to read Guy Gavril K. He has been trying to get me to read Guy Gavril K for over a year. I actually picked up Tagana to read and then I just keep pushing it out, pushing it out, pushing it out. You know, you have to respect someone that would go to such great lengths to get you to read an author that they love. So, that is how I ended up with A Brightness Long Ago. But I'm going to make myself read Tagana first. So, the month of June, I'm going to read Tagana. And then July, I'm going to read A Brightness Long Ago. And we're going to see what happens because there were some very interesting things going on. And you know, and, and he was just laughing. He's like, I just knew you were going to Google their names. And I almost did because I was trying to think, are these people like from Italy, Venetian? Like these are some interesting names. I wanted to know what nationality they were, where they were from and just get a feel for it. And I just got distracted and never did it. Otherwise, I would have caught him in the act of this prank and it would have had a little bit of a different ending. But I, I got the biggest kick out of it. I have just been chuckling every time I think about this book or see it over on my book cart. That, that was a good one, Steve. You really got me and, good. And that will take care of all of the books that I hauled for the month of April. I know it looks like there were a ton. Honestly, a lot of these were pre-orders and then all the John Gwynn books were a birthday present to myself because the opportunity to have signed copies of all the books by my favorite author, I just couldn't pass that up. Guys, thank you so much for watching today. I hope you saw some books that you have read and enjoyed and you're excited for me to read them. If any of these are books you've picked up but haven't read yet and they're part of a read along or a buddy read you want to be involved in, all of that information can be found in the description box down below. I hope your morning has gotten off to a great start. I hope the rest of your day is absolutely fantastic. I'll see you in the next one.